Allison Roman, and welcome to Solicited Advice, the podcast where I get to do what I love most, give advice. Each week, I'm joined by a very special guest and several very special advice seekers as we do our best to solve all of, or at least one of, your problems. This is, unfortunately, I regret to inform you, our second to last episode, our second, well, our last real episode of Solicited Advice. Next week, we are doing a special edition Solicited Advice. Stay tuned for that. And then we are taking a little break before we come back. Today's guest is the only person I could think of deserving of such a slot on our last or second to last episode. And that is one Jennifer Sullivan, the producer of this podcast, also the host of her own extremely successful, fun to listen to podcast, Fat Mascara. Uh, she is a journalist in the beauty world. She's been doing this for so long that she makes it look extremely easy. And that's why she's so good at her job. She has a column on the cut called Ask a Beauty Editor. And I also have the privilege of calling her one of my dear friends in real life. Please welcome to the show, Jennifer Sullivan. Um, okay, well, I want to welcome to the studio, Jen Sullivan. And Jen, it's not your first time in the studio. Let's be honest. It sure isn't. Hi, this is really weird. This is like tables are turned. I know, isn't it uncomfortable? How's it feel? It's not uncomfortable, but I much prefer being behind the dark little square. Are you feeling vulnerable? Are you feeling raw? Are you feeling ready? Well, I mean, I do a podcast too, so I feel that all the time on my podcast. But now I'm on your podcast. I know. It's different. We're going to talk to strangers, although I guess you do that too. You do it all. I try to. Okay, there goes Lenny. So yeah, Bye, Lenny. Uh, short-lived cameo uh, for my cat Leonard on my lap, if you're watching this on I video. I thought Lenny was short for lentil. Well, it was. Lentil was the name that my friend Chris gave him, like, as a joke. And before we thought we were going to keep him. And then I thought, is that a little on the nose? You know, is Lentil, like, a little, like, of course, she has, like, a food named Cat. And it was, like, a joke. And I felt like once we decided we were keeping him, that couldn't be. So it went to Lenny. And then okay. I now call him Leonard. Yeah. Well, he he's got, like big boy persona i did just meet him and he's the sweetest he really does yeah yeah we were uh, you were at my house last night for hanukkah i missed the latkes though i just got i got a maple tart though well you had eaten dinner to be fair Not to be fair to be fair yeah but you're yeah anyway but so which is to say that jen and i are friends in real life as well as colleagues in the <laughs> podcast world i wonder if we should lean more cooking next season or like the thanksgiving episode was so fun to me um but again, like, I, I couldn't let go of the other parts, you know? Yeah. I think we just got to make too. a two-hour podcast. And we're working it out in JK. real time with the listeners listening. They're loving it. I know. <laughs> They're here for it. That's all, that's all it is. If you, and if you, have, if you have comments, questions, concerns, um, where do people leave comments on a podcast? Or is it sort of like one of those? You know, we've been getting them in the reviews sometimes. And then we've been getting them under the YouTube videos sometimes. Oh, but those also aren't that ever form, please go to allisoneroman.com slash podcast. That's where the form is that people are asking questions. And sometimes people will also comment as they're writing in their question. Like, love this about the podcast. Here's my question. You know what I mean? Mm, cool. Keep it coming. Yeah, I do look at those too. I look at them while I'm in bed. So just know if you ask a question on that form, I'm reading in bed. Oh, yeah. cute. Not like especially sexy or romantic, just sleepy. <laughs> It's like a bed activity or subway. Yeah. I do it on the subway too. Like some of the couples that have called in with questions. That actually threw me for a loop. We're getting a lot of like double call-ins, like people both taking the phone from each other. I'm like not sure what people well, do. That happened yeah, on multiple I, shows. Yeah. I think it feels a bit like prank call a little bit. Like, oh my God, should we call Allison Roman's hotline? Like, and you're like a little drunk or like you ate some mushrooms or like you're having a good time. And you're like, oh my God, wouldn't well, this be so funny? Like, well, if you needed a, if you needed a push, now is the push. And yes, it would be so funny and you should call. What's the number? Uh, it's 856-502-4816. Boop. That was a cat calling contribution. Um, yeah, it's so funny to be like, ah, what a season. And like, go like recall all the, the people and the, the guests that we've had, but cause it's also like the only work that I do that comes out like soon after it's made. Everything else I do is pretty much like done weeks or months in advance. And so it feels funny to reflect on something that like just happened. <laughs> well, now's the time for me to confess something, which is this. As I screen callers for the show, 
I find myself, I can't help myself sometimes. They share their problems with me. Sorry if you didn't get on the show and you've shared your problems with me personally. Like you probably know my voice. And I find myself like wanting to start answering, like they're my friends I'm talking to as I screen them to see if they'd be a good guest on the show. And I want to give them the advice. And then I have to like bite my tongue because I'm like, A, I don't know if that's what Allison and her guest would say. B, Mm. I found myself on the phone with random strangers for like 20 and 30 minutes at a time. And I was like, if we're going to do this effectively and productively, I need to shorten these calls. I just like people call up and I'm like, oh, I want to talk to you. You're so interesting. Everybody has a different job from somewhere in the world that's different than where I live. And I've been loving talking to all of them, even even if they haven't made it on the show. I know. It's a story of my life and that like any time a person starts to talk to me to say something, I'm like, oh, where do you live? Like, oh, what's your girlfriend do? Oh, that's so fun. Like, where do you like to go? Like, I engage, engage, engage. And every time I've done a book tour and I just did one this fall where I like had like a portion of it, if you bought a certain ticket, you would, we could like hang out for a minute and I'll sign your book. And every city without fail towards the end of it, like Elena would come up and she's like, we gotta, we gotta wrap it up. Like I haven't even moved through half the people because I'm like really settling down to really go deep and discuss every single thing. And I just like talking to people. And this has been such a great way to do that. So thank you for sifting through and facilitating and listening to so many people, even if they didn't, you know, they weren't chosen for this particular podcast, which has to do with so many factors when they're available, my availability, your availability. Like it's not just... You know, if you didn't get on it, it's not because your problems weren't wonderful or bad. <laughs> what, a wonderful problem or a horrible problem? <laughs> I do try to tell people that and or that it was too similar to someone we just spoke with. And I've been finding like themes that just keep coming up. Like family yeah, people inter- don't know how to break up with each other. I'll tell you no, that. Breakups, family, intergenerational dynamics and in family mm. seem to be a lot. And then I think there's a lot of still the coming out of the pandemic, like creative ruts or stalling in our career, wanting to move somewhere. And like, just like at that point in your life where you're like ready to make a change. And for some yeah. reason, people think Allison Roman is the person to tell them to make I don't that know. change. Or Jen Sullivan, actually. Well, me, no. Um, I mean, maybe that's our caller. You're the person. Know. But um, there's been a lot of people who are like, I want to move here. Should I move? So I know we only had one of those calls on, but um, the answer everybody is always yes, <laughs> in my yeah, opinion. I believe that you should. I believe that you should move somewhere. I also believe just start a podcast. <laughs> oh, you're going to create a yeah. bet? Uh, start a podcast. There you go. Just kidding. Um, here we are solving the world's problems. Well, should we do our podcast? Should we take some callers? Should we take our first live caller? Everybody, welcome to the show, Anna. Anna, thank you so much for calling in. Thank you so much for joining us. I have no idea what your question is, and I can't wait to find out. Okay. my I'm really happy to be here, first of all. My question is, I'm curious how you navigate a creative drought or when you're feeling uninspired in your various pursuits, how do you deal with burnout and uncertainty? I don't know. Can we ask Jen? I actually, <laughs> What's actually funny I have is- a question for Jen. Um, Jen, how do I deal with uh, creative <laughs> burnout and uh, uncertainty? Um, Start a podcast. <laughs> yeah, that was my solution. Um, it's so easy, though, to give other people advice about this question. I got to say, it's like, put the project down, like go for it, do something for yourself. Um, like make, make a goal bullet point list for like the next six months, like blah, blah, blah. Like there's like a lot of things that I could say that I feel like I've heard. It is one of the most like deeply unsatisfying feelings to feel like you can't make anything new. Right. And I, I creative rut can be interpreted so many different ways, but I feel like that's how I interpret mine where I'm like, am I just doing the same thing over and over again? Am I evolving? Am I changing? Am I morphing? Am I growing? Does anyone care? Does anyone notice? Like there are so many people now at the party. It's sort of like, does anyone care if I'm even at the party? I care. You know, I care. Thank, that you. You're at the party. Party. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it has like a, I think that there was such like a burst of stuff being made like right after pandemic happened, right after pandemic, right after the pandemic happened. And it feels overwhelming to try to keep up. And I think that like most people, when they're like, I'm burnt out, it's because we're trying to make things at a clip that perhaps shouldn't be asked of us or we shouldn't ask of ourselves. What what kind of work do you do? Yeah. Yeah. I'm an artist and I, 
I teach movement based practices and that artistry goes through it's like watercolor art, graphic design. I help people build online platforms for a business based in movement, right? And they're bringing their business online. I help with all of like the design and the logistical aspects of getting in the online. And I think a reason why I wanted to ask this question is because you both seem like people who have a lot of irons in the fire. You're juggling multiple different things at once and and at a very high level. Like how do you keep all of the balls in the air? You know, with their, you have an audience on you, looking at you, expecting new content from you. And life is happening behind that, you know? It's like, and we all have obstacles that we've got to get through in our personal life and still show up in a professional way. And it just seems, I'm just curious. <laughs> Not <laughs> just curious. Yeah, no, it feels really impossible. And I, yeah, I mean, Jen, what are your thoughts? Well, it's funny, you just said you do movement-based practice, and yet a lot of the things you're creating end up having you probably sit in front of a screen to make the thing happen. Like, no matter what creative pursuit we're in these days, it feels like at some point it's going to come down to a screen, whether we yeah. want it to or not. Like, even if you're a bread maker, you want to put your breads for sale, you're going to go on some <laughs> website and put them, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. So for me, that's the same thing. And, you know, I'm a writer, I'm a podcast producer, uh, I like to cook too. But getting away from the screen has always kind of been the answer for me. And by that, I mean, like, literally going out into nature and not having access to Wi-Fi. Jen, Jen's into birding. I paint birds. That's what well, I paint. You guys got a lot to talk about. <laughs> it's like you know specifically what's... birds. <laughs> the, re Wait, really? the reason yeah. I got into birding is like <laughs> completely kind of this. I found myself always planning ahead and thinking about what's next and like what's my next creative pursuit and realized I was never being really present. So I had to come up with like a trick to mm. force myself to be present. Mm. And the trick ended up being like birding. Like you can't go birding and not like focus, really focus on what's around you, right? Like you're <laughs> you not gonna can't see the not birds. live in the moment if you're not birding. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're burning. If you're not burning, Sounds you're not present. ridiculous. But I will tell you, I'm sure there's other ways to do this where like some like some athletic endeavor probably where you have to focus on what's in front of you. So you 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 trick your brain into not spiraling on that like, oh, I didn't do this yet or I have to do that or the creative thing I did is not as creative as I wanted it to be. And all those things our brains do. And for me, yeah, like getting away from the screen tends yeah. to be the answer. And yeah. It's hard to I do. think we also like expect a like catastrophic or like cataclysmic result from each project we put out into the universe. And like, if it doesn't do that, maybe we feel the pressure to like move on and do something else and do something else and do something else. Mm. And like, what happens if we sit with the thing that we're making and we keep doing that thing and we do it for longer and like we let that sort of evolve on its own without feeling the need to just like constantly rush from project to project because that's when I feel like burnout happens the quickest yeah. when we're like, okay, well, we're doing this, but we're doing this, but we're doing that, but we're also doing that. And like, mm -hmm. maybe I'm projecting because I'm doing 42 things, mm -hmm. but I feel so excited about them all. But like, I, at the end of the day, I don't know that it's the best for like my mental health or my, my creative output to feel the pressure to have like each thing. Also, like some things are behind the other. Some things are more, I got started earlier. So they're more evolved. Like they're all, they all have like their own little lifespan and ecosystem. Yeah. Um, have you but always honestly, worked like, in movement is because I feel like for creativity, for me, I got out of the sphere of influence I was in for Allison, like she was into food, but now she's doing an advice podcast. Are there other interests you have besides that? that yeah. I've been thinking about pursuing a uh, acupuncture degree actually, and, and working mm. more focused one-on-one -on -one with people. I think in a lot of ways, I feel really overwhelmed by the online thing. And I just kind of want to have like a personal interaction with people. Um, yeah, it does feel like after the pandemic, everything is like content more all the time. And I am not keeping pace very well. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I'm not keeping pace well either. But I think what Jen said is really important to remember is that there used to be a time in our lives, creatively or professionally, where we're like, I'm a bread baker. I make bread with my hands and flour and salt and yeast. And like, that is what I do. Or like, I'm a yeah. painter or I'm a writer or I'm a photographer or I'm a whatever. And like the art exists in real life and they yeah. make something with their hands or they spend their time on a craft. And now 
it doesn't matter what you do because also if you become an acupuncturist you're still gonna have to have a website and you're still gonna have to get your client list and you're still gonna have to attract the da 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 and you're gonna feel the pressure to be like am i as good as all these acupuncturists i'm seeing on tiktok (laughs) and you're like oh my god (laughs) like what am i comparing myself to so i think that we have to sort of attack the uh the root cause rather than the symptoms because the symptoms will follow us everywhere we go yeah yeah um But I think that like any inkling you have of being like, I'm interested in this, like I think pursue it is always the answer. I love acupuncture. Huge fan. Yeah. Just started going. Yeah. Love. It's the best. Also, I feel like it like cha- really changed my body. It's like witchcraft. Being in school can be very creatively fulfilling, oh, I yeah. think. Like yeah. I can't think the last time I took a class and you're actually reminding me like, oh yeah, just go back and start learning again. Even if you're yeah. not going to use it for work, like there's no negative thing that's going to come from at least starting Right. Learning mm-hmm. acupuncture, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, like without any the sort pressure. of reinvigoration. I yeah. think as the, the older we get and the more steeped into our craft or profession we are, the the more time it's been since we were like bright eyed and bushy tailed about yeah. it. And like that enthusiasm goes such a long way. Yeah. When you are new to something and you're excited about something and you don't know anything, you can tolerate a lot of shit. You can work harder, you can work longer, you can fake your way through stuff. You can like bullshit your way through things and it doesn't feel as taxing. And like 20 years into it, you're like, okay, yeah. like, what are we doing here? Yeah. Does that sound dark? Am no, I like taking I'm this having so a realization dark? real time. It's like maybe some of the burnout and the, you know, the fatigue and these different endeavors, it's like maybe it is time to learn something new and add something new to your tool belt because you've plateaued. I've plateaued. I do feel like, I do feel like, Instead of saying we're burnt out, I think saying we've plateaued is actually maybe a lot more yeah. accurate. Yeah. Because even if you like, sometimes I find myself being like, well, I'll work a little less and maybe I'll feel rejuvenated. And I'm like, well, that's not it. That's not the solution. Yeah. The solution for me personally isn't to take a step back. I feel like I've plateaued. Yeah. I feel like I'm not evolving. I'm not, there's no, what, what's above me? I don't know. Yeah. And I think, again, when you're really young, there's goal, you have clearer goals and things seem further away. And you're like, one day, like, I'm sure Jen was like, one day I'm going to work in a magazine. And then like, she did for a long time. And then, and then what? And you're like, well, I achieved the big goal that I had at this stage in my life. And like, then I'm going to get a podcast. And then you did. And it's successful. And you're like, okay, like the goals, they become bigger and you achieve, I don't know. There's like a goalpost movement where (sighs) it becomes more difficult to sort of keep raising the bar for yourself because when you're young, everything seems impossible and you like run towards it with this energy that like, once you've started achieving things, you're like, okay, what else do I want? I don't know. (laughs) Like if we can have it all, what does it all mean? And I I don't know. It's feels like very existential. I don't know if I've helped or hurt. (laughs) No, I think it's been helpful. I like plateaued. I think it has more like levity and optimism to it than burnout. Um, I also think that we, can be resistant the older we get to learning something new because it's hard to be a beginner. Mm. And maybe that's, that's yeah. advice for everyone, you know? It's like, yeah, it's, it sucks being bad at something when does. you're older. Yeah. But I kind of miss that feeling. The, the more you guys were talking, I was just like, oh yeah, I need to go back to where like, I don't know shit about what's happening in front of me right now and have somebody yeah. else, the pressure be on them. And I'll just soak yeah. up the knowledge and see if I'm inspired. Yeah. yeah. I also think when we're younger, it's a lot easier to have mentors or they present themselves to you in different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, I have lately found myself like really craving that. I'm like, I I want like a creative partner, a creative mentor. Like I, I, I'm struggling to like figure out who to look to that I actually know, like as a one-on-one person and not just like a person you admire from afar. Um, and just being like, oh, someone's gonna teach me. Someone's gonna tell me it's gonna be okay. And they're gonna guide me to the place. And once you get to a certain place in your career, your life, you're sort of like, oh, am I on my own? Am I like figuring this out for myself now? That feels tough. Yeah. We need an old sage. (laughs) Yeah. Guidance. (laughs) I I love, in most cultures, I feel like there is sort of the like village wise person in a lot of places and stories that I've heard. And I feel like that's what we all need. Yeah. It's not me, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, Have you yeah. called this podcast? Anna, will you be our me? mentor? Will you be yeah. our guru, Anna? <laughs> but I think talking about it is really helpful because also plateauing and even burning out is not failing. You're just like, yeah. oh, I've I've maxed out a little bit, yeah. you know? And I think that that can be tough to admit. Yeah. I also want to point out, Allison and I immediately took your question to a workplace, like to be about oh, wow. professional. I just realized we did that. 
for all we know, I could have been talking about like, you just want to paint more or you want to learn a new language. Like I'm forgetting creativity is in all aspects of our life. And I don't know why I made it immediately a professional question in my head. So I just want to check in and make sure that like, (laughs) We yeah, didn't that's hear true. That, or we both, yeah. or we both projected that in a way. Yeah. Wow, we did. Sorry, we like totally spoke for twenty five minutes about uh, <laughs> like work how to creative work rust differently. <laughs> <laughs> but either for all three of us, then like maybe remembering that creativity happens not just in the workplace in your profession with your family, like building yeah. families, growing friends. I've learned so much from Allison on this podcast about like treating friends like romantic partners, building your friendship base. I've been working on like bringing more people into my life, because that's also inspiring, even if they're not guru level, even if they're just like, you know, parallel level. So it's nice. I, I do feel that way. And even like, I know you called into the show and we are, it's an advice show. <laughs> We're talking about advice, but reaching out to people in your life also and just being like, oh, I'm feeling so stuck. And like, do you want to like go to this new restaurant? Do you want to like, I'm going to yeah. take a ceramics class. Do you want to like, did it like, bring someone into the things that you're trying to do that have nothing to do with what you're doing, if that makes sense. And that way you're sort of like, it doesn't feel like this dramatic, like lonely journey. You're not like, I'm going to Mexico for a week alone. You're like, no, I'm just like going to go to a neighborhood. I don't typically go to, to try this place that I wanted to see what it's about. And like, that feels like a fun new thing. Like anything that takes you out of your routine, generally speaking, I think is really healthy for work, pleasure, fun, art, creative, anything. Um, taking a different walk route, doing a different exercise class, like anything that you typically do. I don't know. Are you a routine based person? Definitely. Yeah, okay. for sure. I, I mean, maybe shake that, that up a little. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you are not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even if you're like, oh, I wear this sweater all the time or like I always wear my hair this way, like any sort of slight change. It's like why I used to be addicted to haircuts because I was like, I felt like if I cut all my hair off and I was like always doing something different with my hair that would inform my like creative level or that I was going to somehow be less uninspired. I I don't know. I I, I felt like there was a direct correlation, but I feel that way less now because I'm not 24. So I don't think you should cut all your hair off, but I do think that like a slight change and whatever it is that you normally always do can make a huge, huge difference. Damn really punchy advice. Sorry. I just cursed a little bit. Oh, okay? It's okay. I said okay. fuck the other day and we bleeped it out. It's fine. Okay. We um, didn't bleep it, but yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. It's well, an explicit maybe rating. we should. I love um, this I'm like so inspired. Actually, just talking to you, a stranger, like kind of, fi- Allison and I came into this and we were both like, okay, we're in a weird mood today. Like I'm already like more inspired just having met a new yeah. person, right? Yeah. So yeah. same. Thank you. Yeah. I'm thanking yeah. you. It can be really energizing. Yeah. Because you also like, I find when you talk to a stranger, sometimes you can like, be the person you want to be you're like presenting as this is who i want to show up as in the world and when we're alone or with the people that we're most intimate with sometimes we can be like a crumpled wrinkled version of that person yeah um and so talking to somebody and you're like okay clean slate this is who i want to be this is how i'm presenting this is how i'm showing up for myself and this person like is a good reminder of like this is who you can be even when you're by yourself and you want to crumble up into like a little wrinkled ball yeah yeah that that was sort of unrelated to anything you asked, but we no, really went true. there. So, it's true, or just like <laughs> being able to relate in having an experiential, you know, ability to relate to each other's circumstances. Like I'm yeah. all the way across the nation from you guys, and we don't know each other, and we still struggle with some of the same stuff. Yeah, that's really nice. The great unifier. <laughs> yeah. Feeling inadequate. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, we're all doing great. We're all just doing our best. Yeah. Um, all right, Anna, do you have any other questions for us? No. Anything thank, else we can help you with? Thank you so much. You are so welcome. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Have a good rest of your day. Bye. You too. Bye. This episode of Solicited Advice is presented by Maker's Mark. When you think of Maker's Mark, you probably think of their iconic bottle with its perfect quirky shape, all dipped in that dripping red wax. As if that bottle couldn't get any more perfect, did you know that the first version of that signature red wax was stamped on that bottle by Maker's Mark co-founder Margie Samuels in her very own kitchen, in her home fryer? Iconic indeed. Maker's Mark brings their dedication to craft to everything they do today, including that same classic red wax on each bottle. Every bottle of Maker's Mark is hand-dipped before it finds its way onto shelves and to your home bar. And if you didn't think that was impressive, let's just say I did try to do this and I was terrible at it. 
So next time you're out and about, grab a bottle of Maker's Mark handmade bourbon and toast to doing things the hard way, like hand dipping bottles and red wax. Because sometimes harder is better and because you care. Cheers. Maker's Mark makes their bourbon carefully, so please enjoy it that way. Maker's Mark Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 45% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2023, Maker's Mark Distillery Incorporated, Loretto, Kentucky. I knew that was going to happen. I knew we were going to like, I almost like, I was like, am I going to start crying? Like what's going on here? I, so I watched this happen on the show in real time when you are with a guest uh-huh. and I watch it evolve and I watch the advice come out. Cause there's always like the first round of advice where mm-hmm. like we're getting at the problem more. And then there's always this moment that happens on each of the calls where it starts to like zing and it's like, mm-hmm. oh, wait, we all are figuring out together in real time. Like, this is the answer. And I'm not I'm saying like, we and like another just thing. <laughs> we like, What's just your relationship them? like with your mom? Like, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I believe in therapy. They call it a breakthrough. <laughs> um, no, they're not therapy sessions because they're just friends hanging out and talking. But like that fully happened in that call. And I didn't expect it because I'm used to being on the other side of things. But I felt her moment because I felt it, too. And I was like, oh, fuck, yeah, I need to like go take a class and learn something new and stop making it all about work all the time. In yeah, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to make things all about, not all about work. Well, we need to work on that. It's really tragic. It's like the only thing I care about. And I have to like reframe majorly. I can't, I can't exist like this. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we should both anyway. work on that. I think it's also a part of, partly because of your, our age and like you get to a certain point in your career and that is like, okay, I, I made it in the career and now what do we do? We just keep doing this till we retire? So I think being at that place is interesting too, but I'm going to go take a class. Like, I don't know what it's going to be. Maybe it'll be some movement-based therapy, but that was inspiring for me. Yeah. Maybe she'll, maybe she'll start a podcast and you'll do movement-based therapy. Yeah. Is that what you just said? That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote that down. Um, Should we go take another caller? I really think we should. Okay. Is this the surprise guest? (laughs) Just wait. Should I, should I welcome our next caller? Yeah. I think that will be, I just let into the virtual studio one Max Cantor. This is my husband. Hi, this is a delightful surprise. Oh, okay. Jen, is it my I birthday? No, it's not. I was a little nervous about this surprise, but can I tell you why I wanted to have Max on the show? Yes. We've gotten a lot of calls about Max. <laughs> <laughs> what are the calls? Pray tell. Allison said the reason for this podcast is if you have a question, somebody else probably has that question too. So I figured just let Max out to the people now so that you guys can like not. Wait, have do to we, are we going to answer some questions? Do you want to, are there any questions that we can answer? I think we should be pretty judicious here. You know, I think just because uh, the call, I, I don't know if we should give the people what they want or if we should. You're here, it, you babe. Know? You're giving the people what it's they like want. Listen Stedman to that voice. Doesn't go on Oprah, you know, so well, you're I, not going <laughs> to love the que- you're not going to love the questions that I get about you, though. So like, what are they? Well, I just want to say all the questions that I get that I get from your fans are none of them are about me. They're all like, do you know where she got those jeans? And I'm like, <laughs> no, I, no, I, I, he doesn't. I don't. He definitely like, does not where I ask, got you know, and then I don't. So Wait, she shows a video who, or a picture. They can't get through to her. So they start DMing you for her fashion credits. Yeah. Every so he'll often. Like, he'll like post a photo of me. And it, now that he's amassed a huge following <laughs> <And> people, <laughs> because people need to know who the man credit? is. <laughs> what? I mean, it's so funny because also it, in the Vogue.com article about our wedding where there's so many photos, I was like, this will all I this will be all I ever have to say. Like this has photos, this has the story of how we met, this has details about our wedding, like <laughs> what he does for a living. Like everybody have at it, and then we never have to talk about it again. But it feels like I feel like um protective of you. And I pre- feel protective uh, of our relationship. I do I, too. I and I think we could even just we could even treat this surprise as a further tease and give away no new information. I know that people would not be satisfied with that. <laughs> I feel like uh, like my life is not a photo shoot. Which is something that my husband said oh, to me after I had a meltdown at our wedding. And I was like, <laughs> I don't know if it was good enough. And he's like, babe, he's like, that was our wedding, not a photo shoot. And I was like, Ugh, that advice is so <laughs> annoying and good, honestly. <laughs> well, can I just say, too, I hate to be a more of a comment than a question guy. 
But mm -hmm. uh, I want to congratulate you both on a really good podcast. I was just listening to this morning's episode. You guys, it's such a good year. Aww, and I would have fallen you. in love with your voice too before we met. If you got a <laughs> podcast out. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, newlyweds, get a room. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I, I also now I feel bad. I'm like, wow, it is vulnerable. But since you're here, Max, I am thinking you didn't get to hear our first caller. But as as we were wrapping that up, I was like, you know who would have good advice? Are you me? drinking wine, baby? One Max Cantor. It's a cider. Oh, okay. I'm sorry to interrupt. Look we at had you. an afternoon drink. Party time here for the last recording. We're both okay, having a I'm weird sorry, day. Jen. And I didn't mean to Jen encouraged it. But okay, also, I just, this was the cider that we bought at the farmer's market. And I have to place an order for the store. Oh, cool. So I didn't know if I should buy a full case or a half case, but it's delicious. You should buy a full case. That guy was so nice. Yeah, it's also a very good cider. Yeah, it's called so. uh, East Hollow. Made in you guys, New York. Real time, State. this is what it's like to live with Max and Alice. I know, I'm sorry. I know. We're, Place we're in Instacart questions. orders and yeah. <laughs> no, no, what I, I, ordered from the, I ordered directly from the <laughs> farmer for this one, Jen. Okay, this is not an Instacart situation. This is not a sorry, D to C. <laughs> this is some guy named Brad who lives in the middle of the woods making cider. <laughs> He doesn't give a fuck about if you follow him on Instagram. He doesn't give a shit if you like his Facebook page. He's just here to make really good cider. And that's the person I want to do business with. Yeah. You no, know? this ties back to the last caller who Max didn't get to hear. But what I wanted to ask Max, she mm. was in a creative rut. And she was asking us what we do when we need to like be re-inspired. And I, now I'm curious. I'm throwing this on you. I did not prep you. What do you do when you need to be creatively re-inspired? Mm. Um, well, I like a little bit of personal time, Jen. I like a little bit of space to do nothing, to walk around, to go to a movie, or to see random old friends. I also like to like re-look at things that I used to love, you know, like old movies that I haven't seen in a long time mm -hmm. that like I loved at one point and kind of like be like, well, why did I love that? What does this sort of like represent to me and does it still represent that to me? So that's just a little bit about me, Jen. Wait, that's really good advice. <laughs> what did and you, you say? know, we spiraled and I was like, burn it down. <laughs> um, no, but you're, babe, you're so good at taking the time for yourself and like letting your mind be free and being like, I'm going to walk for several blocks or I'm going to like go do this thing by myself or I'm going to like take the time and like sit with the headphones and do the stuff and not fill your brain. You're also not especially interested in social media. And I feel like that that's a huge asset to you. Like, it's not something that you concern yourself with. You, I've never once heard you complain about somebody on social media. I've never once heard you be like, like, look what this person's doing. Except like, and versus me, who's like <laughs> screenshotting you like several times to me, like, can you even? <laughs> I save that mostly for my friends. I know you don't have time for that. Spiritually, well, this is really boy. I should call into the podcast more often. You want to say nice things and flirt with me in front of I random do. listeners. I yeah. always want to flirt with you. Um, <laughs> my gosh, Jen, this is like a version of the parent trap, except we're already married <laughs> <laughs> and, and we're not twin sisters. Oh, you mean the parents? That makes we're so the much parents, more sense. Jen's the twins. <laughs> Sorry, Come that on, makes what? a lot more sense. <laughs> Maybe that's a, a that movie like you need to revisit. Week? I Max. know, and last week I embarrassed myself because I didn't know that that was Nancy Myers, and I was like, "No, that's not Nancy Myers." I was like so smug about it. It You're is. Like, yes, it is. Yeah, I didn't know yeah. that either. It's like famously well, Nancy Myers. Well, I'm not a director, so I was famously wrong. About oh, it. oh Jen. yeah, director. Oh, shit. <laughs> no, that is your 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 world, I guess. So, um, but yeah, you didn't take the question exactly where uh, Alice and I did, which is immediately talking about work. I love that you just answered like go see something creative that inspired you in the past and how does it how does it reflect now on how you feel do about you feel it? like it's harder to be inspired now and like stay out of the rut now that you're older yes very much versus when that, you like uh, yeah, yeah i like i like uh think fondly of the sort of like naive version of me when i was like early 20s who was just like i'm gonna write in my journal i'm gonna like see things and experience it. And this one's gonna make a difference you know and it's like kind of sweet and I like mm -hmm. like trying to tap into that sometimes again because it's definitely a lot harder when you have like actual business implications for things or you've experienced like some disappointments or some successes it's just like your relationship to that uh creative energy people can't see me but I'm putting that in quotes uh mm. you know your relationship to that changes I think um, yeah so I... the deeper you get into it and it can be very hard to 
like the sort of woo woo stuff that maybe I would be dismissive of, it can be really hard to tap back into that. But I actually think that's like the wellspring of most good things. Wow. That's why I married him. Folks. <laughs> Get out of here. Stuff. No. <laughs> no, I, 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 when I was younger, I never once thought about how I was going to make money. It never yeah. once occurred to me that I was going to have to monetize anything or make money from anything. I was just like, I'm going to make really wonderful books and people are going to love them. Mm. Yay. Like that was, that was my only care and concern. And now mm. I'm like impressions and CPG yeah. numbers and returns and audience growth and impressions. And I'm like, <laughs> gross. It is. I'm not gross. a businesswoman. I'm, Did you I'm, ever see that my dinner with Andre? Yes. You know, and like I haven't seen, opening, we should watch that again. Yeah. Look at that. We could reconnect with in the opening scene. He's like, when I was young, like all I thought about was like, art and literature and now I'm older and all I think about is money. <laughs> yeah. It's not even thinking about money like in the in the positive. You're not like money's amazing. You're like money, how do I get yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um yeah, it's tough. But you're an inspiration to us all. And I often think <laughs> about I'm serious. I often think like how can I treat my day or like my sensitivity to needing alone time and never actually seeking it out or getting it with more care and intense intention. But that's also something that we navigate as a couple. Yeah. Because I feel like I could go for weeks without it. And that's <laughs> just simply not the case for you. Uh -huh. But that doesn't mean I don't need it as well. I just don't. It's like I should t listen to myself when I'm like, you should be alone for a second. Don't, maybe don't book your calendar full eight days in a row, you know? Well, I don't know how you do it. I don't know. What do I know? It's a mix and match. You get a lot out of that, too. I just also want to circle back that Jen and I don't normally drink alcohol during our recording. <laughs> and it is it is four four o'clock in the afternoon on Thursday. It was not the 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 norm and it felt like a fun little frivolous naughty thing. I just felt like I had to defend myself against the accusations well, of my husband. I, I was felt day a drinking bit on like the job. I know. I felt a little bit like accusatory i was like is that what's in your cup it's like what, yeah it did it? feel a little bit like that uh, this is like a holiday week <laughs> episode it's our penultimate episode oh good word penultimate thank you i put on red lipstick and <laughs> the uh downside of the drinking is also that i'm just getting redder and redder as we talk and it doesn't help <laughs> watching you two be adorable together and me blushing like crazy Jen, why here. do people get red when they drink alcohol well allison it has to do with the histamines and i don't know just, you do know I've probably written an article about it. I, um, <laughs> I want to circle back to Max. Not and Max doesn't like to be in the hot seat, but no, he I really, really do doesn't. like. I I do like the advice that you shared there, and I'm like re inspired by that too. That I'm gonna like, but for me, it's not movies. I'm gonna go back and revisit some books. I think that I always loved and always inspired me, and maybe I'm gonna read them a different way this time around. You know what I mean? Mm. What do you mean, read them a different like way? Like front to back, or what? Yeah, like. I don't <laughs> usually read books twice, and I think the few books that I have, you read it the second time, and you're like, holy shit, I missed mm -hmm. the whole first lesson. You know what I mean? It's just a, a whole different book, and it's inspiring in a new way, so I'm going to do that. Yeah. I think I'm going to do that, And then I'll go too. birding, which your wife has made fun of me about, I think, twice I on think this podcast is, already. so Max cute also. you and Eric go birding, <laughs> and I do love that. Yeah, where's Eric? Let's invite Eric night. into the green room. we got to get <laughs> no, your husband up on the show. so charming. <laughs> How like, dare you? I would be blushing watching you two go birding in your little galoshes and traipsing through the little, woods like i would be your you little knock knocks they also so call cute. binoculars knocks <laughs> i think that started i think you started that allison actually i don't think I that i did correctly. i think eric started that but irrelevant oh, yeah. um yeah you've taught me a lot about birds when we're like hiking and stuff <laughs> you're like oh that's a red-throated warbler i'm <laughs> oh, like oh god i'm never gonna <laughs> they're mating this down little did i think this episode would go in that direction but i have like a beauty podcast and yet it's gonna be like get birding girl is there a birding podcast that you could be on because maybe that's how you get out of your creative rut y'all my you know how spotify gives you the end of the year wrapped up yeah guess who my number one podcast was? that's not Isn't about it? birding it's wow. called bird note <laughs> <laughs> it's like a it's what? like a two minutes a day podcast and they just like give you some bird fact with like a little mini story they're who really doesn't want to start their day with a little bird fact this is this whole, this episode is so wholesome i want to jump out a window like oh, this is, yeah. we need to rough this up can somebody do something naughty yeah i'm gonna bring in some chef's kiss voicemails that kidding. are crazy we're gonna do that that'll rough should it up. max stay for those or you want to kick them out you guys could answer them if you like would that be fun i hear be the audience in real time saying keep max around 
for the keep chef's him. Kiss. Yes. <laughs> okay. 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 We'll keep him. Okay. All right. Let's go do chef's kiss. We'll do. We'll do like a quick, fi- a tight fifteen. I feel really good. I feel like I got promoted. I'm kind of excited. You did well. You did well. Well, we weren't sure we were going to ask you to stay, but your voice <laughs> is just so good. <laughs> Uh, guess what, babe? It's chef's kiss time. We get to <laughs> answer favorite. some questions uh, from our callers who have left a voicemail. Okay, obviously, you know what it is. But if you're listening and if you've never heard it before, you can call and ask your own questions at 856-502-4816. Okay. Um, that poop was cute. Hi, Allison. Uh, this is Anna from Kathmandu, Nepal, far, 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 far away land. Um, I love your books and uh, your recipes have never failed me. I love hosting parties and everyone loves your food. Uh, but today my question is not food related, but the cat and plants related. Um, I have a cat and he loves eating my plants, all my plants. And I know you have two cats and I know you have plants too. So I was wondering how do you ensure that your cats do not eat your plants? Uh, that's it. Thank you. Bye. Oh my God, Anna. Um, that was such a nice message. I... Well, we have one cat who is not interested in eating anything and one cat (laughs) who is interested in eating absolutely everything. (laughs) And so what I recommend is downloading an app that actually (laughs) Jen's husband, Eric, told me to download. It's called Picture This, but it's really plant specific. So they should have named it differently. But you take a picture of a plant and it tells you exactly what it is. If it's poisonous or harmful to animals, pets, children, whatever, if it needs watering, whatever, more light. And it's very, very helpful. If it's not on this app, I'll just Google it. Or like, at least I'll find out the name of the plant and then Google, is this plant poisonous? Um, Mm. Because if they're not poisonous, it's like, is it okay for them to eat the plant? I don't know. I know. It's like, let them have a little fun, right? But you can also uh, deter them from, so first make sure that none of the plants are poisonous. And if they are, maybe just don't have them in your house or have them in an area where they can't reach. Um, But like, Honestly, I just <laughs> lentil Lenny Leonard. He's the one who eats the plants. He's our chunky boy. He is a floof. He's a monster. He's, he's a, a big fella, big boy, and he loves to munch on anything that makes a sound, anything that flutters near his face. I love him so much. Oh my god, where is he? I know he's he's, in this, the other room. he's really. Can you believe we're on here talking about how much we love our cat? No, I'm fired. I'm fired. This uh, is too no. wholesome. Uh, Fuck. No. It's, okay. it's not our fault. He's too cute. You know, he's he too sweet. This question was also wholesome, but I think you have to like deter them. I've also heard spray bottles like full of water work where you can just kind of like spray, spray, like spritz them and they are sort of deterred by whatever behavior they're doing. Um, I've heard never yell, which is good advice. I think across the board for any interaction with human or animal. Um, because it freaks them out and they don't like the loud noise. Um, but spray bottle with water I've heard is good. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I I think also just like if there's an area where they're trying to eat the plant and it's like at their eyesight, move the plant onto like a ledge or a stool or whatever. Um, also it's like, I don't know if it's every plant. I've talked too much about cats and plants for enough of a lifetime. So let's move on. (laughs) I, I think it's cool to encourage their interests, you know? Let them follow their curiosities. Maybe they want to eat a little plant. Maybe it's not going to kill them, you know? Well, you have to They're Google it. Make sure it's out. not going to kill them. Yeah, but once you know that, it's kind of like, you know, let them this have a little fun. what it's going to be like to co-parent with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be like, like move everything, child-proof at all, <laughs> black box, no windows, <laughs> make it safe. And you're going to be like, uh, <laughs> it's okay. Like, you know, let them, let them ride the scooter. Or, I don't know. Okay, next caller. <laughs> Hey, Allison, this is LaShonda calling from Montreal. My partner and I were at your uh, book tour show in Montreal, and it was amazing. My question is, are there any items that are better store-bought compared to making at home? In other words, is there anything that you think isn't worth making homemade? Thanks so much. Mm. Bye. It's like so soothing. That question. Yeah. Uh, babe, do you want to take this one? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, Max famously does not cook anything. Which is not actually you made matzo ball soup last night. No, I can store by with the best of them. Actually, yeah. not with the best of them. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm a little um, slow around the aisles. You are a little slower on that, which I thought was actually so sweet. The other day you just said, I'm just slower at grocery shopping than you. <laughs> I think you said you and Lauren, like you like lumped Lauren in there with, for no reason. And it well, was very it's like sweet. The, yeah. The, the sort of like uh, flow chart of a grocery store, like when you don't really know how items all pair together and like it, you don't, you're not used to like buying things for specific purposes. You're kind of like, I'm like, sure, I'll go to like aisle 18 and then I'll go to like the front of the store. It's like, I don't, it, it doesn't. Cause you don't make, know that the olive oil and the canned tomatoes are on the same aisle. You're right, like zigzagging. Right, right, right. right. Uh, yeah. So I just lose a lot of time. Supermarket yeah. sweep. You know, you'd really it's be, not for you. be lifting there. No, no. Um, I would say there's a huge list that I have actually. I am not a proponent of everything homemade. I, I don't think that homemade or like in a restaurant, like house made, everything is necessarily good. House made ketchup is a red flag. <laughs> if you see it on a menu, you got to get out of there. You can't eat there anymore. You got to go. I would never ask you to do that. And I think you know why. Because a taste test, it's just never going to be as good. It, it doesn't matter if the tomatoes are good. It's just a different product, I think. And, like, I can tell. Um, ice cream, almost never, ever, ever worth making your own. I I just don't think that the home ice cream machine is on par with the large machines of Mr. Hagen Dawes. Like they're just never gonna be as good. Um aioli is aioli and aioli is delicious. It's not Hellman's. It's not mayonnaise. And I I buy both or I make one and buy the other one, but they're not a replacement for each other. I don't necessarily like making my tuna salad with like homemade aioli, even if I use all neutral oil. To me, that's like a time and a place for Hellman's. Um, what else? A lot of different kind of like, I don't know. People are like, you know, you can make your own mustard. I'm like, oh, can I? I'm never going to do that. <laughs> um, I sort of think when it comes to a lot of things, like just because you can doesn't mean you should. And um, I don't know. When people are like, make your own Cheez-Its. I'm like, I'd rather die. Like, no. Homemade Reese's peanut butter. I'm like, no, it's not. No, it's not good. Hey, Allison. My name is Blake. I am calling from Haddon Heights. New Jersey. I'm a longtime fan. I've followed your recipes since the lemon short stack, a deep cut. Anyway, I hosted my first Thanksgiving this year and made your golden turkey stock, and it made everything from the stuffing to the gravy taste just exponentially more flavorful. And it got me kind of romanticizing about the idea of maybe tossing aside the better than bouillon and spending a lazy Sunday making a bunch of chicken stock or vegetable stock. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that I'm kind of confused about what a stock even is and how exactly it's different than a broth and how are they both different than a soup. It was all very overwhelming. Anyway, I figured that I might not be the only one who has this hard-hitting question, or maybe I am. Anyway, I'm just hoping you may be able to help demystify stocks and broths and soup. Thanks so much. Blake, I love it. I love this question. Um... Do you know the answer, Max? I know that I find myself asking the same thing when, like, there's a pot with random animal parts. And I'm like, is this for compost? Is this for eating later? Is this for... Yeah. What are we doing here? Where is this going? Am I eating it? Are we straining yeah. it? Is it discard? Yeah. So It's really hard to tell. A stock, from my, from my knowledge, a stock is unseasoned or, like... Uh, uh, you know, could be vegetable, could be beef, meat, pork, whatever. Stock is something made, I think, just from the one ingredient. Like, I think if you make chicken stock, I think it's just made with chicken. And it's not, it's rarely seasoned. Or maybe there are vegetables. Maybe there's like alliums and aromatics and stuff. Um, I could Google this right now, but I'm not going to. I'm just, I'm riffing here. I also associate from like my time in restaurants that stock we always like roasted the bones for. So like beef stock, we would take beef bones and we would roast them and then we would make beef stock from that. And that is basically just like a very beefy, sort of gelatinous, high collagen, high protein uh, liquid that has a lot of flavor that you would then use to make whatever else you're making, i.e. a sauce, i.e. a broth. A broth to me is a seasoned product. So broth is something that you can sip Broth is something that you can cook with. Broth is something that you can turn into a soup. And a soup is its own thing. A soup 
can be many things, but a soup is a bowl, a composed bowl of ingredients, whether it's pureed or not, but lentil, chickpea, bean, vegetable, chicken, whatever. It's like the, the dish is the soup. You know what I mean? But like you can use chicken broth to make chicken soup. Does that make sense? I'm gonna... It makes sense to me. You know, I'm glad this show exists. Um, when people could you just, <laughs> thank you. Um, you're like, that's why I had to get an office. Thanks. Um, <laughs> oh, so I'm, I'm hearing on the internet stock is made from bones and broth is made from flesh. You know, I think this but, is a good excuse to dismantle some of our collective classifications. And yeah, I also think it's lazy to just Google something, but that did reinforce what I thought, which is like bones. Mm. But I also make chicken broth with chicken bones all the time. Or I would make like pork broth with pork bones all the time. But I think, yeah, broth, seasoned, stock, typically unseasoned, both made from animal and aromatics used for cooking. Soup is a dish, is a, is its own thing. Like, I hope that Max and I helped you with that last question. Um, <laughs> we are going to say goodbye to Max. We're going to answer a few more questions on the hotline. Um, thank you for coming by. This was a really fun, lovely surprise. Did and you like having a surprise? I, I, I didn't did. Wanna, I, didn't I thought it might be you or Eric. But or then I was like, why wouldn't I was like, why would it be? And then I was like, maybe he has a question for me. And I was like, no, he already asked I me to marry. Came here to- <laughs> <laughs> How cute would that be? Oh my god, no, I would be embarrassed by that. We can no, also just never air it. Not good. That would yeah. be not good. Um, okay, well, thank you so much all right, for having me on your show. I love your show. Thank you. I love that you listened to it. Thank you. I have very very dry skin, and I also am thirty eight. And I also hate taking care of my skin, if I'm honest. I feel like it takes up so much time and it's exhausting to me. So I am a less is more skincare routine person. And so when I first tried Cerebalm, I got it as a little free sample after my facial at Rescue Spa, my favorite place in New York to go. And I was just absolutely delighted in how easy it was to use, how good it made my skin feel, how multi-purpose the product was. And frankly, I am absolutely obsessed with it. And not just that, but now there's a toner that sort of has replaced my previous toner, which if you've been to Rescue Spa, maybe you know what it is. But it's also replaced my moisturizer. It's also replaced my makeup remover. I feel like I am fully on my way to having an actual routine, even if it's just the three steps. So grateful forever to Donna Sarah and specifically the Sarah Balm. If you yourself are curious, you can go to donnasera.com and pick up a bottle. It comes in a very gorgeous, sleek little white package. And honestly, it would make a great gift to yourself or to somebody else who's even a little skincare curious. Sure didn't help that much with the chef's kiss questions, though, did he? No, of course not. not no offense, but love he's just like not his forte. We chef's kiss you. are primarily culinarily leaning, which I think is why next week's episode where I just answer chef's kiss questions in rapid succession is going to be really fun because I feel like they're almost always specifically me and or cooking related. So I can really just go in. Hi, Allison. This is Jess calling from Minneapolis. Wondering what your nail routine is. Um, How do you keep your nails looking great when you're cooking and washing hands and just being about town? Um, As I look down at my kind of chipped um, chip nails. Really curious what your secret is. Thanks. Um, I, my secret is that I do gel manicures <laughs> and it's because I, if they're not gel, they will start chipping within 24 hours and they'll look not good. So, um, the gel manicure also prevents me from biting my nails, which I used to do. People are always like, how do your nails always look good? I'm like, well, it's because it's a gel manicure and it's like by design, not supposed to come off. And it's by design, always looking shiny and like put together. And I feel like it is my number one uh, beauty anything. Like I'm not so good at any other beauty routine or like secret or like, I'm just not good at it. I don't, I believe in gel manicures. I believe in uh, biannual Botox. I believe in uh, eyebrows, both sculpting, uh, like sculpting, shaping, tinting. (laughs) I was like, I believe in love. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Um, I believe in things that have a long lasting effects, right? Like all those things that I just mentioned, like I get done and they last and I don't have to think about them for a while. Preach. I, I call this high maintenance to be low maintenance. Yeah. 
Like, yeah. is I'm going to put it, in the yeah, front load my time on the gels. Yes. I also get gels so that I don't have to worry about it every day. And yeah. I'm going to like make sure like, my skin looks good so I don't have to like wear a ton of makeup every day. Exactly. I'm going to get my hair colored so that like, oh, well, even if the, it's not styled, the color looks good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> High maintenance to be yeah. low maintenance. Yeah. Um, and the reason I asked, I had that collar play, Allison, every fourth call is about your nails. I kid you not on the hotline. Yeah, that's hilarious. Well, I think I your fingers are in your work a lot. Color. I used yeah. to wear the same color. the same color. And I think that that me deciding to not was like a small, but to me, important step in being like, I'm evolving. <laughs> like I'm, I'm not the going to stay the same. You know, it's very difficult to walk away from a thing that people identify with you or identify, associate with you. Right. It's like, oh, Allison's nails are always painted this shade of red. And people still even say they're like, oh, that's like Allison Roman red or whatever. And I don't own the color. Like, obviously, a lot of people wear that type of red, but it's associated with me. And so when I do paint my nails like a like a rust or like an oxblood or like a maroon or something. Baby, she's a, doing a baby steps, everyone. <laughs> which I'm doing or like in the summer, it's more of like a melon. It's I, I don't ever do you crazy like girl or green <laughs> or gold. That is crazy for me. And I remember the first time I deviated. I couldn't stop looking at my hands. I was like, who is she? Because they were and and conversely, I feel that way when my nails aren't painted. I feel like very naked. I feel undone. I feel unkempt. I feel just like not together. And this is a small thing that I can do for myself that even if I haven't washed my hair, even if I don't have makeup on, I'm like, my nails are looking really nice. And that makes me feel really good. All right. Hear that, everybody. We're probably and it's something I only have to do every two to three weeks. So Yeah, we're probably still going to get calls about it. But I think that's that's the answer. Okay, last caller, last caller. Hi, Allison. This is Chelsea from Salt Lake City, Utah. I am calling because I need help with neighbor gifts. Utah is a very big neighbor gift culture. Um, people will just pass around little things to each other, like aromatic dough topped jars or cellophane wrapped clementines and i am looking for something to contribute that is maybe a little more classy a little more unique um something tasty and i need your help so if you could suggest some small gifts that i could pass along to friends and neighbors that would be great oh and maybe something savory because we are going to have cookies out the wazoo in the coming weeks. I would love your help. I love the show. Thank you so much. Bye. Do you think she's talking homemade food, edible stuff, or like just food related that she could gift? I think homemade food stuff or things that you home make, because it seems to me you're not going to give every neighbor in your neighborhood like a gift card to Best Buy, you know? No, no, no. So, I just more mean like yeah. a nice bottle of olive oil. Like she's looking for like a, a I think thing homemade. That she's making. Yeah. yeah. Um, savory. I'll start get if that's there. okay, because I thought yeah, of get one. in there. <laughs> well, I heard the question well before you, and I that's thought true. of what I like to give people, which is chili oil. Oh yeah, you I like or chili, chili crisp. Oil. It was chili yeah. crisp, really. Like yeah. you fry up the. Okay, this is where I am not the chef, but like you fry up the garlic and the shallots. shallots. Thank you. Take over for me here, but that's no, an no, no. excellent. You, I'm, t- I'm telling you what's in your chili oil because I eat it all the time. It's still in my fridge. I just replenish yeah. it with oil. Shallots so and garlic, fries for a good long time. Then you put in the red hot pepper. Oh, I have to throw a little cinnamon in there, a little star anise sometimes. You grated ginger, ginger. ginger, I think. Yeah, absolutely, because it gets crunchy, the ginger. There's recipes for this. I'm sure Allison Roman can help you with that. But I do put it in a mason jar, and it looks so cute, and it lasts all year, and it's savory, and you put it on anything. You put it on eggs. You put it on, like, it makes everything better. So, yeah. That's, That's my really one good contribution. Yeah. I love that. I would say mine would be granola. Only because oh, you can make yeah. it as sweet or not sweet as you want. You could also dabble in the savory granola territory, but that's like a nice homemade gift. I think that homemade granola is always better than granola that you can buy. Sort of the opposite answer to the question earlier. Um, mm. But that's like a thing that you can make a big batch of also and just like parse out and you can order those like brown paper craft bags. Um and like tie a little oh that's even better you don't have to pay for a jar you don't have to pay for a jar you could also put it in a jar but like you know those are more expensive but um 
you can also like write out the ingredients. You can like label it. Like you can make it sort of like, oh, I'm making this thing. That's nice because it's not dessert. Um, and it's also not something that has to be eaten in 24 hours. But also yeah. same could be said for chili oil. May I make may I ask a follow up question about savory granola? Because now I'm intrigued because I don't like mm. sweet things that much. How do you get it to be sticky together if there's no like honey or brown sugar or whatever? Um, I make mine with egg whites and soy sauce. Stop. I have a recipe for it in dining in. If you can imagine, there is book so old, Jen. Yeah, it's no. I um, I feel like I've cruised kidding. that book many times. Savory granola yeah. is like I can get behind that. I just have never been into the like. It's got raisins and it's brown sugary. No, taste. I hate raisins. Also, my the, also the same granola recipe in that book, which is like barely sweetened granola. It's, it is truly barely sweetened, Savory and it's like granola. sweetened with um, maple syrup, and it's like just enough to kind of like make it not sweet. But I think. I always warn people. I'm like, it's really not sweet. Like it's, it's to me seasoned on airing on the sweet side, but that sounds good um, too. Cause maple syrup for whatever reason, like your maple tart, I'm not a big dessert person. And that thing is so good. Like yeah. maple isn't too sweet. Okay. Savory granola. I'm going to make a bunch and bring it out to Utah and give it to this lady's neighbors. Right. I think yeah. either those are good. And if you're, if you're like deep into the canning preserving community, which I like doing like, honestly, like, jams, marmalades, kimchi, sauerkraut, anything that's like fermented or preserved with sugar or salt is such like a nice gift because to me, it's like, I made this for you. This is like, I made it with my hands. Like this was done in my kitchen. Like it feels very personal um, and it takes time to make, but is like, I don't know, nice to have in the fridge. Good answer. Yeah. That was it. That was our last chef's kiss for our last episode chef's kiss of the pen ultimate episode <laughs> i threw that word out there that's right i can't believe you invited my husband onto the show i don't know if that's a good can't believe or no bad. i love it i okay, i hope okay. the, i hope we you know he he is mysterious he didn't give the people much you know but i probably i probably like this. I probably like let in the floodgates now. I was saying we had a couple questions. So here you go. You're satiated. You've gotten your max and we're done with it. And now well, I've left the people you can wanting more. Call in, you can also call in and, and ask who else you want to see on the show. I think that booking the guest is honestly like I feel so uncomfortable asking for fa not favors, but I'm like, will you be on my podcast? Like that to me feels like uh, I get a lot of anxiety around that. Even though I like it when people ask me, I was like, yeah, of course, you know, like that sounds fun. It's such like an easy lift for most people. Um, but I still feel sheepish about like asking, you know, well, will you be on my thing? Will now we're going to say, well, our our audience wanted you to be on. So we'll throw it to them. It's the audience's fault that we're asking you to be on in next season. Next yeah, I also don't do. even know who you are, but the audience demanded it. We need, we need you here. So uh, um, yeah. thank you yeah. so much for such a wonderful season. I know this won't be the last time you and I speak, um, but it was such a blast to do this with you and I feel like I did learn a lot and speaking of things that you're doing that you're not good at or uncomfortable doing this was definitely one of them and I just am very grateful that you allowed me the space and time to figure it out and to navigate this with you because I don't think I would have wanted to do it with anyone else oh and we're still figuring it out personal growth you're like we haven't figured it out yet. no i think we're uh, no i'm kidding i know it's gotten better every time and i also just think it's been so fun working with you on it so thank you thank you and thank you to everybody who listened and the several people who screenshot their spotify wrapped and said that we were in their top five podcast because it just came out on uh in september and there's only now 11 episodes so to crack the top five wow we are fortunate we are blessed we are grateful episode is brought to you by Maker's Mark. Solicited Advice is hosted by me, Allison Roman. Our podcast is produced by Jennifer Sullivan with the help of Elena Rodriguez Villa. Technical production and editing is handled by Red Rock Music. And our theme music was created by Yosef Monroe. And for questions, sponsorship inquiries, or anything else, please visit us at allisoneroman.com slash podcast. <laughs>